this video is uh, intended to explain a bit about memory structure and addressing. Um, <clears throat> in order for that to work, what I'm going to do is shut down a couple things. I'm in RS Logics 500 here, and what you're looking at here is what's called the project tree. This is the equivalent of my computer. You'll see it's nothing but a series of folders that hold all the information. Much like my computer, when you click on it, you can find C drive and Windows folders, and there's there's all of the folders for the the registry and and all your applications. This is the same idea. You got all your help files, you got all your controller properties and channel configuration. So that's how is it going to communicate? That's covered in another video. Program files. This is our ladder logic. We'll be adding more and playing with this later. The intent of this video is to talk about this one here called data files. Um, all, all PLC logic is intended to just manipulate or make decisions based on these data files. So I look at an input and I change an output because of it. You press start, I turn on an output which starts something. Um, or I have an internal flag of binary, system done, system starting, safety is enabled, stage one complete, or timers, you know, at how long something's happened, T40, T41. You sort of know how all of this works. This is just a template. This is a beginning. There's much more to it. Um, they've said, we know you're probably going to need this, so we've given you this much. But I can go right side mouse, new, and I could add uh, B9 or T9 or any of these here, messages and strings and, and integers and, and, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. We'll talk about a lot of this before we're done. But for example, I could say integer, I could give it a name, you know, uh, process one, uh, a description if I wanted, how many elements, what's its size, global meaning it's available everywhere, local meaning it's only available in a particular subroutine like ladder two, ladder three, ladder four. Um, again, see the uh, program control video to better understand that idea. We'll leave it as global. And when I hit it, you'll see that process one shows up as N9. It's all just memory. Um, when I open up PLC logic, like this file, which is just a single file in the folder called program files, what I get is a, um, a graphical representation of it that looks like ladder logic. And I can add contacts and timers and all sorts of things in here. And all I'm really doing here is just saying, referencing this information, these data files over here, I want you to make decisions. So if the data file for, say, input is on, do the timing function for this data file. But I'm really just writing logic to make decisions and manipulate this. Of course, inputs and outputs reference the real world. The rest of this is just internal stuff that we use to help make these decisions. Um, I, I hope that gives you a bit better idea how the, that all works. Where people tend to fall apart is they get confused on what's internal and what's external. The only thing that actually connects to a wire or to a light or to a button would be inputs and outputs. Those connect to the real world. Everything else here is really just software. It's fake. It's just ones and zeros in the computer. But in order to be able to control a real output and have it turn on three seconds later, we need a fake timer to give us that delay. Um, or if we want to press a button so many times and then have something happen in the real world. Well, we have a real input and a real output. This is the button we're pressing. This is the output we're, we're counting or delaying on a count. But the act of counting has to be done internally and it's fake. And that's what we've decided to use C5. I could have used, oops, my bad. Uh, I could have used uh, C10 if I wanted. I just have to make it. <coughs> um, so that's kind of the idea on memory is that it's ours to manipulate. And people tend to overthink it. but. We're just going to turn an output on if the logic says turn it on. If we say check an input, the input's going to be checked. If we want to see the status of these, we can double click on them and it will show us the status of the inputs. 
or the outputs or any of these data files timers counters binary we can see the status we can scroll over it see the address um, it, it's, it's really ours to manipulate people get confused on the address but if you go right side mouse on the ladder logic and say properties you'll see you can choose how the address is displayed uh, split line single line slash bit or word slash bit uh, on IO meaning stuff that's input output only connects to the real world do I want slot bit or do I want slot word then bit it's our choice so people get confused what I don't understand why mine looks different than his or mine looks different than last week it's all exactly the same it's just how we've chosen here to have it represented in this logic here um, I want to take a second and explain a bit about addressing and I'm I'm sorry this will be a little bit scribbly but I'll, I'll do my best to keep it as neat as I can um, generally they all fall under the same format there'll be you know something colon something dot something slash something that, that, that's the format it's going to be. I mean, this could be question mark, colon, you know, Nike swish dot, smiley face, slash, moon. It, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, for example, if I were to say um, N7, colon, 0, slash, 4, as an example. Or T4, colon, 0, slash, DN. I keep going. C5 colon 0 dot um, ACC. The format's all the same. And, and, and this is where I think people tend to get confused. Anything that's falling here in front of the colon is always referring to the data file. So in that list we looked at, C5 is a data file, T4 is a data file, N7 is a data file. This is the data file. Anything in front of a colon is always a data file. The first digit after can change a bit, unfortunately. Uh, in this case, N7 is referring to the word, or word zero. Uh, T4 is saying, it's actually a number, like this is the first timer, or timer zero, counter zero. If I were to put an output or input, like if I said output colon 0 dot 0 slash 4, let's say, outputs the data file. This is referring to the slot or how many expansion I.O. cards. Uh, our PLCs are MicroLogics. If it's on the actual processor, it's 0. You can add expansion I.O. cards that just plug into it the each expansion IO card takes the next available number so this only applies to real IO so real inputs and outputs would have slot dot word but you notice the pattern dot word here dot word here dot word if you see something, you know, um, something colon, the first something's the data file, after the colon is either going to be slot or word, and then when you see a slash, anything after a slash, so you see slash dn or slash 4, these are always referred to as the bit. If it's after a slash, it's bit level. So slash something is bit before the colon's data file. This can be a bit confusing, and, and maybe over here to simplify it a bit more. If it's I.O., so if it's an actual input or output, after the colon you're going to have, so it would be colon 0 dot 0. It's which card is it on, which word card word this card is quite often referred to as the slot oops SL huh, this is going great eh? as the slot number so 
card word and then obviously slash what bit on what bit in this word on this card if it's internal so this includes all your b3s n7s t4s all of those it's going to go colon the very next thing is going to be word slash bit so i mean kind of you have to look if it's an in i or an o it's going to probably go card word bit if it's uh, internal memory it's going to just go word bit um, but it's really not as complicated as it sounds I mean the first character before the colon is your data file after a slash it's always 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 a bit the only thing that can change is because when it's real world IO word doesn't cut it we have to say which card and then define the word if it's internal there is no card so it's just word then bit um, so, so to write it out completely, if I were to say I colon, that's input colon, uh, because it's real world, it's I, it really truly exists, the terminal screw on the PLC, it's going to go with slot dot word slash bit. That would be the same if it was O. Those are the only two options. Anything else, um, for example, B3 is the binary data file, and if I were to say, uh, you know, four slash zero, I'm saying word four slash bit zero, right? So that, that's that, that that's sort of the that's the addressing model that exists. Um, if you get that straight, the rest is really easy. Um, Later on, I guess in lab two, what we start referring to is indirect addressing, where the format remains the same, except we now say N7, um, uh, let's say N70, so that would be N7 data file, word zero, slash, but if you put square brackets, we could say something like C50 dot, well, that's the accumulated value of a counter. So now we're saying n7 colon 0, so n7 data file, word 0, but when we're trying to select the bit, which is after the, the slash, we're saying take your bit reference. In other words, pick which bit based on the accumulated value of this counter. So now we're using a counter to define which bit we want. It's sort of a always changing address is the idea. I hope that kind of clears some of it up.